Okay, students, for your Elements of Art foldable, all you're going to need is a pencil, a blank piece of paper, and something to color with. So that could be markers, um, crayons, colored pencils. I'm going to use markers, but either of those will work. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a little foldable to show us all the Elements of Art. So it's going to look something like this when you're done on the front. So you have all of the Elements of Art, and then you have some examples of what those things are. And on the inside, you're going to have the definitions. So, when you open it up, you'll have all these definitions. And you can pause the video here if you want to look at all the definitions. So, they're in order of the order the words are on the front. So, lines first, so that's the first definition, and then shapes, so shapes the next definition, and so on. So, it's the same order. That way, when you look at the front, the word on the front matches the definition, so lines the top one here, so it's the first definition. Okay, so we're going to start by folding our paper in half, hot dog style, so long ways, and match it up as best you can. And then you're going to make some lines across here, so we need six lines to make seven spaces, so I'm going to start right here, the lines, the lines. So it's the first three spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, I need one more space, seven. The last one's a little bit small. Okay, and I did that with pencil just in case I want to erase it later. So we're gonna put the elements of art listed on here, there. And you can do them different colors. Um, you notice on my example, I did them all kinds of different colors. So I have one. And then I'm going to use a different color for shape. And then form. So I'm just writing the words right now. In just a minute, I'm going to draw some things to represent that word. And then what color do I want to use for the last one? Values. Okay, so it doesn't matter what color they are. You'll notice that they're different on either one. Um, and the next thing I want you to do is I want you to draw some things to represent those words. So I'm going to use this marker to do that. So for line, you'll notice I put all different kinds of lines. So I've got diagonal lines, straight up and down lines, horizontal lines, squiggly lines, curvy lines, all kinds of different lines. And then for shape, you can draw several different shapes. Or you can just do one, that's fine. So for form, form is a little bit different than shape. It's basically just a 3D shape. So you could draw something like cube to represent that. And then space, on my example one, I did a big circle here and another circle that's smaller, so it looks like that one's far away. So there's lots of space in between these two. You don't have to do circles. You could do a different shape if you wanted. And so for color, if you want, you can just color in with your favorite color or you can make a little rainbow to represent all the colors. So maybe something like that. And then for texture, I think I'm going to use green because I'm going to make a grassy texture. So I'm going to do little lines to represent little pieces of grass. So you'll notice when I do it over and over again, especially since it's green this time, it starts to look more like grass. And so the last one is value, and value has to do with shading. So you can see it's really dark here, then really light. So that's the only one that you're going to need a pencil or a color pencil. That way I can do, well I need a better pencil. That way I can do really, really dark up here. And then as I go further down, I can lift up 
and release some of the pressure on my pencil so it gets lighter. Okay, so pause this if you need to and look at all those and make sure you have them. And your visual representations of the word do not have to look exactly like mine. Okay, so we're going to put our definitions for the words in here. So you've got to separate this just like you did here. So we got to draw our lines. So we need six lines again to make seven spaces. Okay. I think those are about where I want them. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oop, I did one extra line. So I'm going to get rid of. I'm not going to mess with that line because I don't need it. So once I have my lines where I want them, I'm going to go over them with this so that they stand out a little bit more. And if it's easier for you, you can go ahead and write down the word at the top corner, the top left corner, but you don't have to do that. So when you open up one of these, you can see all the definitions. So I'm going, oops, messed up my camera. I'm going to leave this open here. And like I said, you can pause this and look at all the definitions, but we are going to write all our definitions in this new one, okay? And we're gonna write them in the same order. So we're gonna do line first. So line, as you can see on the one that already has the definitions, it says line is a mark on a surface. So I'm gonna write is a mark and try to do it in something that y'all can see is a mark on a surface and it's fine if you want to do this in pencil I'm just doing it in um, pen so you can see it better so our next word if we look on the outside is shape so this next definition is for shape see how it matches shape and then the definition is right under shape okay so the next one is shape so that is a closed line and then in parentheses I'm gonna put geometric or organic and the reason I'm putting that is because some shapes have only straight sides like a square and some shapes are have wavy sides that are all kind of weird so geometric shapes are the shapes you usually see in math. So our next word, if we looked at the front, would be form. So this definition is going to go with form. So form is a 3D shape showing length, width, and, oh, and depth. Okay. And then I might draw another little cube there. So our next definition is going to be for space. So the definition for space is the area between objects. Okay, we got a couple more and I know I'm going quickly, but you can pause the video whenever you need to. Okay, our next definition is color. So we're going to write the, color, the hue of an object. Okay, we got two more. So this one, this definition goes with texture because that's the next word on our list if we looked at the front. And texture is how the surface of an object feels or looks. Okay, and these definitions are shortened a little bit. So texture technically is how the surface of an object feels or how it looks like it feels. So we can add that if you, if you want to. You can add looks like it feels if you just would like the longer definition. And then the last word on our list when we wrote them on the front is value. And value 
is the lightness or darkness of something. So I'm going to leave this one open, our example one, and op go back to the front so you can see that the definitions on the inside, because the definition on the inside of this one we just did is the same as this one, are in the correct order. So you have line, shape, form, space, color, texture, and value, and then you have a visual representation of what those things might look like in an artwork. And then when you open it up, you have the definition. So you have line, and then you have this definition, and so on for each one. So this Elements of Art Foldable is a really good thing to do at the beginning of an art class because you have all the things written on the front, all the words, and you have something to look at to remind you what that is. But then if you need to know what the definition is, it's easily um, right on the inside. So when you get done with this, um, please make sure you take a picture of the front and the inside and um, send it to me. Um, I hope you had fun making this. It will be useful throughout the rest of your projects.